Hi everyone, it's Natalie and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to go over the application process and my own journey in applying. I applied to only four schools. For some that's too little and for others that's too many. I chose these four based off a few factors. There are 11 schools within the US. I only wanted to go to US schools. There are some in Canada. I didn't want to go outside of the US. Then from there I looked into the cultures of the schools. I also wanted to make sure that the prerequisites were items that I could actually foreseeably uh, complete within the next year. So this was this was last year, right? I uh, didn't want to retake the GRE because I had taken it almost 10 years ago and I didn't want to retake it. <laughs> uh, I had though just recently taken the MCAT because I did plan on going to medical school uh, way back when and I had that under my belt. So if I had a school that I was interested in culturally, I knew that if they accepted the MCAT versus the GRE that I could look into those. Let's list these schools off. I applied to Loma Linda, Rosalind Franklin, Eastern Virginia, and Indiana. I was rejected from Indiana. I was invited to interview at Eastern Virginia, Rosalind Franklin, and Loma Linda, and I was accepted into Rosalind Franklin and Loma Linda and I am attending Loma Linda starting on Monday. So that's in less than a day now, cause it's after midnight. So Loma Linda and Rosalind Franklin did not require any tests. That was really important to me. Eastern Virginia and Indiana did require either the GRE or the MCAT and I had the MCAT, so that worked out great. They all required personal statements or essays. Rosalind Franklin had a very unique personal statement exercise. Uh, they requested that you pick five pictures that represented you in some way and you had 250 words to explain how that was a reflection of you. I thought it was really awesome. I'm also an English major or you know I like writing so I was probably one of the few who actually enjoyed this activity and or activity <laughs> this uh, writing challenge. They all required letters of recommendation all except Rosalind Franklin required three, Rosalind Franklin required two. Loma Linda and Rosalind Franklin were very explicit in explaining that they would like surgical pathology shadowing. That was very important for me to highlight because at that point in time when I was applying, I only had autopsy shadowing experience. I reached out to the director of Loma Linda and she helped set up shadowing at Loma Linda Medical Center in the surgical pathology lab and I got to shadow two of the instructors as well as two current students of the PATH-A program there. It was so eye-opening. The surgical lab is a very different beast <laughs> than autopsy. Um, very fast-paced, very time-sensitive, and I really liked it. I was shocked, actually, to how much I enjoyed it. I am an autopsy girl. I love autopsies. I think they're fast. They're fascinating. <laughs> I think they're fascinating. I think they're so interesting and no single body is the same. So it's always an adventure when you're, when you're in autopsy service floors. The surgical lab really was, I like being able to multitask. I like having little bursts of adrenaline and that's what I felt. I felt the urgency there and I felt the, the need to be very meticulous. And, um, I don't know, it was, it was different and I liked it. So many different specimens were coming in. You're working with the histologist and you're working with the pathologist and the surgeons as well. So I was blown away. Try to shadow, definitely shadow the surgical um, lab if you can. Um, but I obviously really recommend autopsy as well. If you wanted to see what you would be getting into, try to shadow there. So you get that shadowing experience, you write your essays, you send in your transcripts, you get those recommendations, then you wait. <laughs> Hopefully you are invited for an interview. I was rejected from Indiana University um, and I was, I was invited to interview at Eastern Virginia, at Rosalind Franklin, and at Loma Linda. Loma Linda was a, what I would call a standard uh, interview, yourself and a number of of people interviewing you, going back and forth question to question. Any advice I can give on that, because I can't obviously go into any questions that were asked, but just know why you're there. Be able to answer why you want to be 
there as a pathologist assistant. If you're writing that personal statement and if you're asking your recommenders to write on your behalf, you, you, know, that, you know that answer. I just think it's very important though for you to be able to practice and articulate it well. Don't do the whole jumbling thing, which I'm probably doing in every single video. Go easy on me because I'm just staring at this little camera and I feed off of the energy of people and it's so hard <laughs> to do that right now. Um, but yeah, I really think it's important to practice that answer and really know why you are there, what you want to gain out of this experience and being there. To any of these, so, so this, this advice is not just for a Loma Linda interview, but for any interview, um, even outside of school. That's just a good, a good answer to have when you're even applying for work, right? Then I was also invited to um, interview at Rosalind Franklin and that multi-mini interview, an MMI. An MMI, there are stations. I'm just gonna throw a random number. There could be up to 10 stations. And at those 10 stations, you are presented with a problem or with a question and you have X amount of minutes to answer the said question or solve problem, etc. To prepare for that, I actually went to YouTube. There's a lot of medical school multi-mini interview videos or medical school MMI videos. I'll link some down below. Oh, and also I will link the admissions pages for the four programs that I applied to so that you can see requirements and prerequisites that, that uh, they list. Um, and also I am um, linking down the American Association of Pathologists Assistant. I used this page that I'm linking as a cross-reference when I was going back and forth between which schools I wanted to apply to. Basically, I don't think there was anything I could have done more to prepare for it. Just go in there, be yourself, be as honest as you can, and take your time reading these questions that you're, or these prompts that you're given before the station. Be okay with the fact that the first two sentences that you state might have to be redacted. <laughs> and you can just be able to, to eloquently put it that, you know what, after thinking a little more about this, this is what I really would like to say. I did that and it worked out really well and I think that so long as you're just go in there knowing that you are probably gonna say something that you don't want to say or that you don't mean to say or say something that you're like what is coming out of my mouth <laughs> I think that you'll be okay go into any interview just being yourself really honestly and truly not only for your own mental wellness, but also it doesn't help anybody if you're pretending to be somebody that you're not. Be the best you. Present the best you that is still you, maybe just a little more polished, but it's still you. I'm just a firm believer that if you're yourself, then then things will work out the way they're supposed to. If a program doesn't want you for you, then they don't deserve you. I mean, it's not just them interviewing you, it's also you interviewing and getting to know them as well. Ask questions, get to know the students. There were students left and right when I went to um, Rosalind Franklin and there were students when I went to Loma Linda. Ask them questions, get to know what what that sort of environment is like, what support they provide, and is everything listed on the, their website exactly what it's like on campus. It's important that you interview them as much as they're interviewing you. I was also invited to Eastern Virginia and I did not attend so I don't have any any insight as to their their interview process. I didn't attend that interview because I had been accepted into Rosalind Franklin at that time. So that was my application journey. I was accepted to Rosalind Franklin and then I was accepted into Loma Linda. I weighed out the options. I chose Loma Linda. Uh, Rosalind Franklin, great school. In fact, every school, all 11 of them are great schools. I have nothing bad to say about any of the schools that I applied to. I sent multiple emails to all of them and they were all very kind. I called a few of, of them as well. It has to be the field because I don't think I have experienced as much kindness from schools as I did in this process. I really have to commend them for it because I felt welcomed 
already without without them even knowing me. I mean, these were emails that I was sending and there was just a lot of a lot of willingness to answer every single question I had, even if it was the most ridiculous question. <laughs> That's all for today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Remember to subscribe and hit that bell and please thumbs up this video if if it helped in any way. I was thinking of doing a video about my first week. I start school, like I said, in less than a day. So it's kind of crazy to think that. <laughs> Wish me luck, everyone. I appreciate you all and, and your support means the world to me. So thank you all again. Give a thumbs up to this video for, for Daniel, my fiance, because he is such a trooper editing all of this. I've been sending him so many videos to, to like mash together. <laughs> anyway, thank you all and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.